that might be really part of the idea. That's cool. Good morning and welcome to another installment of Credit Rockstars, the weekly podcast put on by Credit Life Financial Wellness and Credit TV. I'm Jeremy Dysock, FICO Certified Credit Coach. And I'm Jared Havens, CEO and co-founder of Credit Life. Brian Del Terra is on the board, co-founder of Credit Life. He's tinkling the keys. You got to be careful how you say that. Are we going to keep saying that? Tinkling keep, the keys. I love saying that. Tinkling. He's tinkling the keys. <laughs> Not not like that time he tinkled on his keys. That was that was different. <laughs> I mean, he's right. getting a little older. So. <laughs> All right, you, <laughs> you age, in the room, guys. Age, age is a heck of a thing. So All what right. are we talking about today? All right. We're talking about investigations. So we've talked about, what have we talked about so far? We talked about what? How to access your credit report. How to access the report. Consumer-based credit report. Yep. And then how to go through that credit report and identify right. accounts that you want to work on investigations or credit repair. Yep, and that was your rockout item last week was to go through red highlighter on the bad, uh, yellow on the questionable, and green on the good. Mm-hmm. All right, so that brings us into oh, this week. Pop oh. quiz. Pop uh-oh, quiz. Uh-oh. Are you going to investigate a green item? <laughs> no. No, you're not. Green, green is good. Green is good. Green is good, just like when you're driving <laughs> or when you're Kermit the Frog. All right, so we're talking about investigations. We're talking about... Uh, the letters, the actual credit repair, the stuff that's getting sent off to the credit bureaus, maybe to the collection agencies, to all the, the reds, all the yellows, all the bad stuff out there. So that's our topic for the day, right? Exactly. Awesome. Before we go Fun into stuff. that, before we go into that, I've got my top five as always. Always have a top five. So this is this is kind of an interesting one. Today's top five is five reasons that people with excellent credit scores get denied. Ooh, I like this one. Yeah, it's kind of a fun. I thought it'd be a kind of a fun topic. Do me a favor, read that intro, because uh, I'm gonna post our I'm gonna post up our our credit rock stars to the top of the page while you do that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no, that sounds great. So it's saying you're finally proud of your credit score, yet when you apply for a credit card, you are denied. How can that happen? Despite what many of us believe, an excellent credit score is not a guarantee of being approved or being accepted. Here are five reasons why you could get declined, even if you have an excellent credit score. Perfect. So, yep, five reasons that I mean, you can have awesome credit, and you might think, "Hey, you know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at my credit karma. It says I've got a 700. I'm going to go out and I'm going to apply, uh, you know, for this this credit card to finance some furniture." And you get declined, and you're going, "What? What do you mean? It it, it says I'm, you know, I'm looking on my app on my phone. It says right here, 700 guys. How can you turn me down?" So, these are the five primary reasons people with excellent and I'm putting it in quotes for a reason, credit scores get de- denied. Number one, you've got too much debt relative to your income. Ah. So it's not really a credit reason at that point in time. You may have an 800 credit score, and you go in, and you're a part-time employee making 9 bucks an hour, and you're trying to buy a Maserati, and they go, I'm sorry, you, you can't have it. And you're like, well, you know, credit-wise, I qualify. Yeah, but you know what? You've got too much too much debt right now. You know, maybe your credit cards are too high. Maybe your student loan payments are too high. You know, maybe you've got other things. You've got the other Maserati you bought, so you've got those payments. And, and, and that's what's called debt to income. So your debt to income or your other credit obligations are too high at that point. That's one primary that reason. Sense. I like that. Yep. Next reason, your credit history is too short. It actually takes, mm. yeah, it takes a surprisingly uh, short period of time to get a, a great score. Those of us who are FICO certified, and anyone who's ever worked with Credit Life will know this. Um, the FICO algorithm, it's a math formula, and, and there's, there's, a, there's a 101 level version that's like a pie chart, okay? So 35% of that pie chart, that's, that's going to be your, your, your payment history. Did you pay on time? Did you pay at all? And that makes up 35%. Well, if you do it for three months, you paid on time, you paid it all, you've got a good 35, right? 30% is balance to limit ratios on credit cards. If you do that one to 3% that we're always talking about, you keep it nice and low. Well, it doesn't have to be for months and months and months. It's in there. We've now affected 65% of our score. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say you only have a couple inquiries. So that history, that history of recent activity, that's 10%. Now we're up to 75%. 
and blend of accounts. Maybe you have an installment. Maybe you have a revolving like a credit card. Well, you've got a good blend of accounts, so there's that 10%. So 85%, which is, I don't know, that was a C when I went to school, but I'm hearing it's like an A- minus or a B these days because, you know, trophies. So, <laughs> um, you know, but 85% of it out of the gate can be awesome. Now, 15% of that FICO algorithm, that's time. That's history. That's length of credit history. So all that other stuff can be too short and positively impact a score, but your length isn't long enough to actually qualify for certain things. Like, like a mortgage, for example, wants to see a two-year credit depth, a two-year history. Well, that's why I talk about all the time you know, with clients is that you know, the score gets you in the door, but it really comes down to your credit profile and other factors based on underwriting and guidelines that ultimately are what gets you approved. The score gets you in the door, but wait, there's still more. There's still more. <laughs> I like that. I grew up on a lot of Seuss. All right, here's number three. <laughs> you may have filed bankruptcy in the past. Here's the deal. When you file a bankruptcy, special types of them, like the Chapter 7, which actually discharge the debts, you can come out of them with a pretty good score literally right when it's done. Your score is awesome. You're looking at your credit karma. You're like, dang, I'm a 620. I was like a, a 375 before the bankruptcy. Well, <laughs> you still got depth of history. That's helping you. You don't have high you know, ratios. That's helping you and stuff like that. And anything that you kept in the bankruptcy, a car loan, uh, maybe a mortgage loan that you kept paying on, those are still positive. Mm -hmm. So you could come out of it with a really nice score. So you go in and go, hey, I'm gonna get myself, I'm gonna get myself a mortgage. I got at least a 620. They say I need a 620 for an FHA loan. I'm gonna get myself a mortgage. And what you run up against is that there's other requirements specifically when it comes to bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. You know, you might need two years, you might need three years, might be able to do one year, it depends on the program, but it has to be seasoned since the time of that bankruptcy. I love it. All right. This is all really good stuff. I love yeah, this. Yeah, well, last week I made excuses for why I didn't have one, so I decided so this to go. Time you doubled I brought, down. I brought my game. I like all right. it. So, here, number four. Ooh, I like this. I like this one a lot. Which score? I'm going to just read this one because this is so well written. Watch this. Which score are you looking at anyway? <laughs> Which score are you looking at anyway? When everyone uses the term credit score, it sounds like there's only one, right? Right? Oh. Well, first of all, wow. There's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. That's three bureaus right there. So we know there's a minimum of three scores based on those bureaus. Now, when we're talking about FICO scores, FICO is what's used by 95% of all banks in the United States. We are up to FICO 9.0. Think of it like this iPhone here. You know, there's the iPhone, then the iPhone 2, and the 3, and the 4, and we're up to, I don't know, 11, whatever, 11 versions of it. Well, there's 11, or but pardon me, there's nine versions of FICO. of FICO. Now, within each version of FICO, there are something called scorecards. And there are up to two dozen scorecards in each version of FICO. Okay? So we've got nine times 12. Okay, what's nine times 12? A lot. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> nine times 12 is 108. And so we've got 108 scorecards applicable to each bureau so times three that's 324 possible versions of fico score so you've got 324 fico scores now you're never going to be looking at the lending version but i've got my fico and it says fico eight it says car score it says congratulations thanks for playing you are not looking at your lending score. There's lending scorecards for homes. There are scorecards for cars, scorecards for insurance, for background checks, for jobs, for all kinds of stuff, credit cards. The one that they're showing you is always consumer facing. So it's actually not your lending score. You might go, well, I looked at my FICO and I went and applied and it was the same. Well, congratulations. Uh, when an inquiry costs you five to 15 points, and when they pulled it and you lost those five to 15 points and it was the same as what you saw on the MyFICO, you just told me that they had been different. So, <laughs> no, they weren't the same. Um, so there's that right now. So when people use the term credit score, it sounds like there's only one. However, there are hundreds of generic credit scores on the market. For example, FICO is already on version nine of its score and FICO's mm -hmm. got different scores for cards, auto loans, and other products. Now to further complicate it, there's three credit reporting agencies. The information on all three, it's not the same because some people 
report to one, to two, or to three. By the way, three agencies, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. So they report to one, two, or all three. Now, when they pull from credit, they may re you know pull from one, from two, or all three. All three is called a tri-merge. Mortgages, they're going to pull all three. So that messes things up even more. So the info is not the same. Now, your FICO 9 score could vary from TransUnion to Equifax, and then to make things even more complicated, banks typically create their own custom scoring models using their own proprietary data that they then apply to the score that they're pulling. The banks don't share that info publicly. It's a big, it's a big industry mm. secret, and that means you could have good credit score on the model and a slightly less impressive score on a different model. And these differences, they're typically important if you're on the margin, if you're on the cusp, if you're on the edge, okay? If you've got a borderline good score, you might be disappointed. If your score is above 800 with FICO, you, you probably have a, a good, even if you're looking at my FICO, you're above an 800, you're probably pretty darn good across the oh, board. Uh, without a doubt. When you're in the 800s, you're getting into what I always call handshake banking. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more comfortable just handing you the keys to the car and saying, we'll finish the paperwork later. I mean, it's, it's that type of thing. <laughs> so that is uh, one of the biggest things. Which score are you looking at anyway? So as far as credit monitoring, what I tell people is, don't worry about the score. Don't get score anxiety and spaz out and worry about the score, okay? None of the scores are your lending scores. So that being said, go for things that have the best information. That's why we say ScoreSense. It's only 22 bucks with the discount link. Smart Credit. Yeah, Smart Credit. ScoreSense is the, is <laughs> score the thanks. Is the, yeah, it's a different they all, one. They should all just name themselves the same thing because then we'd never be able to tell them apart. They should all but, name themselves Credit Score. Yeah, that would be that <laughs> But would yet be they're all different. And we can call our company. <laughs> we'll call the company Credit Score. <laughs> Welcome to Credit Score. Hey, we need you to get a credit score for your credit score. Um, <laughs> did you check on Credit Score? So, yes, smart credit, <laughs> smart credit, um, smart credit's the one that we're recommending currently. And, you know, if you've been watching us for a long time, you might say you used to recommend that one. That's right. We did. We're doing smart credit now because we have things change and improve and we like the detail inside the, details the report. as well as the add on features. I'll the, tell you the, the introduction of budgeting type yep, feature. Yep. Money manager. Yep. I mean, they have a credit builder uh, tracker in there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like the fact that you can get the detail, you know, a lot more detail than some of these ones that you need to do direct to creditor letters. And letters are yes. what we'll talk about today. Yep. So, um, smart credits, a total win for that. Um, and my, the, I really yeah. also like the legend below in the in the payment history. The one about because it shows a twenty four month, but even shows that's the one about Paul payment. Bunyan and the blue ox. That legend. <laughs> no, that's a different one. But just that legend, like when you look under, when you're reviewing, like we talked about in the last episode, when you're reviewing your credit report, yeah, you know, bef the each you know rectangular box, then you have 24 month payment history. But they even have a legend there if you had any late payments, 30, 60 day, or 90 mm -hmm. day, it'll show a tally for the total amount per bureau, which is really and nice. That's to super know. user friendly. That's nice. Yeah. So that that's the point. So you know, if your scores above 800 with FICO, or if it's even above 800 on on uh, smart credit, you're going to be in good. What about Credit Karma? Credit Karma and uh, enough said. Credit Karma blows. <laughs> Seriously, Credit Karma only gives you a part of two bureaus. And okay, I want you to think about this. But I get it free. It's free. It's free. Okay. I'm not, I'm going to give an abbreviated version of what Mama used to say. Stuff ain't free. Okay, that's my clean version. <laughs> Stuff ain't free, kids. So Credit Karma is click bait. What I mean by that is it costs legitimately hard cost. It costs about three bucks to access a bureau. Last time I had looked, and this is years and years ago, last time I looked, it was $3.35 to get an Equifax uh, report, you know, industry, business to business. That's how much it costs. And so they're giving part of two bureaus. Um, not sure how much the other one costs, but they have to pay that. That actually is a hard cost they're paying on your behalf. So how in the world do they make money? You know those recommendations that they say for you? They're like, hey, we recommend that you do this. And you know, based on your credit, we recommend that. They're not based on your credit, guys. They are based on what that advertiser is bidding to be shown in that spot. And they, the advertiser set a daily budget for a daily number of views, a daily number of click-throughs they're planning. It's clickbait, guys. It's literally just to harvest your info to sell. And it is to... Uh, clickbait you through to, to products that you may not want, you may not need, there may be better, and you might not even qualify for because it's just an ad. They don't actually think it's good for you. They don't actually know if it's good for you. It's a flipping advertisement. And ironically, when you do apply for the thing they're saying that's good for you, the scores and stuff they're pulling, Credit Karma showing you Vantage scores, they're going to be pulling FICO. They're not even pulling the type that Credit Karma had. <laughs> exactly. So that's what I think of Credit Karma. Um, 
number five. Number five reasons that people with good credit get. And I know this one went a little long, but I thought it was good content. Well, um, I can tell you're very excited about this one. I was one. very excited about this one. <laughs> well, because it answers a lot of the questions that we get commonly oh, yeah. out there. Um, number five, you're addicted to sign on bonuses. I love sign on bonuses. You're addicted to sign on bonuses. I get every single one I possibly can. I, I bet you do. <laughs> you know, that 10% off, hey, you know. When you get up to the register and they go, you know, the gal goes, you know, if you apply for the, uh, you know, the, the Victoria's Secret card, you'll get 10% off your entire purchase. Plus, you'll get coupons in the mail every month and, you know, we'll sell your address to everyone. And you're like, ooh, 10% off the $900 in thongs I'm buying. Because I don't know, apparently I'm cross dressing now. Because I'm, cr- I'm cr- don't judge me. <laughs> don't judge me. Don't judge me. I'm. No, so um, I've got five daughters, dude. And I'm just, I'm just mortified that I just, yes, world. I just, and girls, I, I just told the world well, that you were thought. Speaking of sign-on bonuses, <laughs> our sponsor, My Internet Credit, has one. So, is that always a bad thing? It's not always a bad thing, but I tell you what, when it's <laughs> grabbing a credit card, yeah, that's yes. right. for no flipping reason, otherwise, I am not going to, on a day-to-day basis, use a Victoria's Secret card. I'm not. Newsflash. Look at me. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. So, doing that. Well, you know, why not do it? Why not save the money? Because you're going to take a hit, a 5 to 15 point hit on your score for the inquiry. I just literally had a conversation last night with a client, and we were going through a debt reduction plan for him. Mm -hmm. And he literally told me, he goes, you know what? Because he had a a Cabela's card that was racked up. He had Mm -hmm. quite a few credit cards. And he said, you know what? He goes, I just thought I was doing the right thing. You know, I was I wanted to get the miles. I wanted yeah. to get the points. I got these for and the miles. Yeah, I he got he goes, these and I for thought the I was getting the cash back or anything. He goes, but honestly, he's like, it just I haven't really received that much, and here I am, almost maxed out my yeah, credit cards. Yeah, everyone gets excited about Literally. Discover Card. One percent cash back, twenty three percent interest, and one well, percent cash back. If it, you carry a balance, bad news. It's it's not it's not worth it. You know what I mean? No. And it's I mean you Do can the manage math. it if you if you can be very disciplined financially. Mm-hmm. And you actually run a, a budgeting plan, a mm-hmm. debt reduction plan. You're mm-hmm. spending with a plan. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit different. But for most people, I'd say probably 98% of people don't operate that way. No. So therefore, they're just like, oh, yeah, swipe, swipe. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll get money back. Oh, I like that free money. Yep. And then before you know it, you're looking and going, oh, my goodness, my minimum payments on these credit cards are so high. The interest rates on these cards are so high. Yeah, I got some cash back. But now I'm paying so much per month. Yep. I can't even afford I can't even bring it down. And now you're stressed out. Right. You're, you're just like. Like this person. Well, you kill the age of your credit when you open these things up, too. That we, we just talked of, about that early on. Not enough credit. There's a lot of negative. There's a lot oh. of negative. That's the reason why we always promote at Credit Life, you know, having a healthy, balanced credit profile, yep. three to five revolving accounts. That's what you have to do. That's going to put you in the best position mm-hmm. when you manage them correctly. But then on top of that, it's putting you in a better position to manage them based on your financial habits. Right. And literally, the info we're giving you, you don't have to hire us. This isn't an infomercial. You don't have to hire us to put these into play. You could literally I mean, rewind you're, this. You're welcome to. Again to and, and put it into play. Right. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, this is the we're giving you the best practices. We're giving you the best advice on this. I, I always like to say with, with that, you know, just last thing on those sign-on bonuses. So this is something I've tracked ever since I've been in credit repair because um, I'm – Jeremy, and that's just one of the Jeremy, Jeremy things to do. He, this is a Jeremy thing. <laughs> this is one of the. There's one of many. Is a encyclopedia is full of them. So we are based in out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, in Bloomington, Minnesota. Here, just up the road, we've got the Mall of America. It's got right now 442 stores <laughs> in there. There are 132 currently at last check, which was three months ago. There's 132 opportunities. To apply for a credit card. Hands off. You put your hands off. <laughs> I, mean, I, say, I saw the camera moving. That's I mean, all. I'm going to win. Earthquake! Oh, Earthquake! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's, that was our special effect for the day. Yes, what did they used to say? Duck and something? It's duck, and cover. Duck, duck and cover? Duck and cover! Duck and cover! We're all going to die. Um, no, so there's 132 opportunities to, uh, at last check, to go through, you could legitimately. I thought it was 144. It was 144. No, no, no. Stores. No, no, it's 400. I'm trying to throw them off. I'm trying to throw them off. 442, Ryan. 132 is, I believe, what it was. You know, sometimes I'm just wondering what to do with my free time, and it's you know, look up the, the directory at the Mall of America, count the stores. Well, well I'm interested to see where this goes. There's, I, can, I, can tell you, I can tell you why I did it <laughs> with my live streaming I do on the on the other thing, the Riff the World, on my live streaming <laughs> that I do. Um, I, I 
was going to do like just I was going to do credit suicide. That's what I was going to call it. And I was oh going to God. I was going to go and I was going to apply for all of them in one oh, day cuz I also know how to I, I know this really great credit repair guy who can fix it. Um, <laughs> so I was going to go and actually I was going to call it credit suicide and and just kind of before and after and see what happens. It would be a great experiment still. Well, but the main Let's have you do it. No. <laughs> the main thing about consideration on the opening of the accounts is that you need to start with something that you can manage. And, and oh, yeah, a lot of people do. aren't prepared yet to have multiple accounts, and that's where you get into real trouble mm-hmm. falling for those discounts. Mm-hmm. Because then you end up with more cards yeah. than you're prepared. You spend more than you're prepared to spend. And, uh, yeah, it's all downhill from well, there. Well, I'll tell you, we vetted out a bunch of them with a, with a company who is our well, sponsor. sponsor that, right? I, 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 credit. I tried sneaking into that a little bit No, 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 it's, it's, it's literally <laughs> I, a natural I transition. I, I that in there. My 800 credit, we, we do. Um, that, they're cool. They're, they're sponsor of the FCRA group, sponsor of Credit Life. They mm-hmm. have uh, accounts that we've vetted together available at my800credit.com. And uh, from there, they actually have uh, initiated a little uh, a little uh, $100 discount off the Credit Life VIP enrollment. So That's basically that lowers the little. barrier of entry. That's to, huge. That's not little. Yeah, if it's well, little. Yeah. Do me a favor. I need a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's actually right a now, third, please. a third off of the cost, which is tremendous. That's and, legit. And we're so glad that they did that because a lot of people really can use the the professional services that we offer, but that barrier to entry to some time is is a little overwhelming. So mm-hmm. in this case, right now, while that's available, hopefully through the end of this month, uh, if you go to my800credit.com, you can fill out a little form asking for your first name, last name, number, and email, and one of the coaches at Credit Life will call after you've got that hundred dollar discount in your hand. So. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get into the program. Uh, no long-term commitments, but you can really see, um, you know, your eyes will really be open. To, for anybody who's watching this show or a part of our, our group, you see there's a lot to know. That ends. It ends. The hundred dollars. It ends. It's the you, end is it, coming. Definitely by the end of the month. Could be sooner, depending on how many people claim that code. Okay. Thank you, my eight hundred credit. You guys are absolute rock stars. So, credit rock stars. That's what they are. So yes, today's are. today's topic. Today's topic is what? Launching the investigation process. Launching the investigation process. Which is really the process. credit repair dispute process. Yes. More commonly known. Yes. Disputes, investigations, they go by many names, mm-hmm. and it's all the same thing. Tell us, Obi-Wan. I shall tell, tell you us. the ways of investigations. <laughs> tell us the story <laughs> of do the launch. Do you want to repair your credit? I think you should do it in the voice of Bane. Do you want to repair your credit? <laughs> Should I do that? <laughs> How long until market fresh strawberries? <laughs> <laughs> Time to go mobile. Uh, so, so, <laughs> so uh, no, well, investigations, you know, that's really what comes down to the letters, right? So a right. lot of times, you know, I want to bring something out immediately to our listeners. You know, when you're going through, like, this is another thing I bring up about Credit Karma. It's very easy to do online disputing. Mm-hmm. We highly recommend not doing that for many different reasons. One, you lose some rights when you do that, but more importantly, they limit you in what you're able to say in there. And that's done on purpose. It's not done as an ease of use for you as a consumer to repair your credit. It's done in a way to make the process more simple for the bureaus, and it doesn't really yield best results. What it comes down to is the structure, the format, and the verbiage in letters. That is by far the most important, okay? And so that's what we're going to discuss here today. So as we talked about last week in the rockout action item, everyone is supposed to go to uh, yourcreditlife.com. In the right. upper right hand of the screen, you click on tools, okay? In tools, we talked about going through those attachments, reading that page, and getting familiar with all the vetted resources that we're providing to people for free to start getting an understanding and handle on their credit, okay? Yep. Now, in there are letter templates, okay? There are. That is very, very powerful because what we've done there for you in an introduction type way to really launch your credit repair process properly, we've actually included two letter templates that help you with the structure and format of the letter. We have one that goes to direct to credit bureaus, so Ex- Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, mm-hmm. and the different accounts that were highlighted in red and how you're going to challenge them. And then we also have a direct to credit uh, creditor, you know, direct challenge validation, you know, right. that's commonly used for like collections and things like that. This is going to really help you get on the right track. Yep at least getting a starting point in your credit repair process. And there are some there are some buzz names for them that you'll hear out there people throw around. So the ones that go to the bureaus, a lot of times they're called dispute letters. Yep. A lot of times they're called investigation letters or just letters to creditor yep. or to the credit bureaus, exactly. primarily credit bureaus. The other type, the one that goes to your collection agencies that goes right to the people you owe the money, um, that's often known as a 609 letter. 
And that comes from Section 609 of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the FCRA, which basically is the thing that lets you ask for validation. I love it. I and, I, it. and I actually had a great question from a client yesterday that figures a good point to, to interject sure. here. Mm -hmm. She had 30-some-odd accounts that were holding down her credit score, so that, okay. was, that was what she wanted to, to tackle as part of the investigation process or dispute process. Mm -hmm. And she received in the mail her first round of letters because we like our clients to mail those directly mm -hmm. from their uh, from their house yeah, the to first start round, the entire yeah. process. But she said, I only received five letters and I had like 30 things, mm -hmm. you know, so I am I missing some letters? And so we looked at the file and basically what we do in that first round is we arrange letters directly to the collection agencies or the credit mm -hmm. factoring companies. And there were two of those with a couple of accounts each. So they okay. had uh, one letter for each of those. Sure. But then in the one of the bureaus, we can actually tackle multiple accounts in each of those letters. Yep. So what I explained is in the letter, there'll be an introduction to Equifax right. about what, uh, you know, what we're referencing as far as the law and the statutes. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be a list of the items as they're referenced in the credit report. Right, so we go after all of it at Going same after time. all of it. We're not throttling. We're going to tackle all of it at once in those letters. So you basically need a letter to each of the bureaus and to each of those original or, or collection agencies or debt factoring companies, debt purchasers in that round of investigations. I love it. I love so it. That's a great question. Well, and I, you know, and before we get into more detail in the investigation process, mm -hmm. you know, I'd love to hear ex your explanation of this, Jeremy, because I know I have mine. Why is someone able to challenge? Why is that? Oh even a thing? man, I tell you, it's, it's like uh, I tell them we, we. The short version of this is, is the whole Johnny Cochran thing, right? You know, the old <laughs> if the glove does not fit, you must acquit. What it is is if you can't prove it, you have to remove it. If you can't prove it, you have to remove it. A lot of people think. You know, a lot of people think we're going after things and disputing, you know, oh, uh, why, why should I dispute this? It's mine. I, why would I dispute a count that exactly. I did that's mine? And we're okay. never doing that. We're never right. saying something's not We're not, not saying yours. it's not yours because, you know, it's yours. Don't worry, you blew your credit. We're not saying you didn't. <laughs> you know, you're, it, it, we're not saying it's not yours. You're not saying it's not yours. But that's a common thing that a lot Total of people do. Total misconception. They, they, yep. they'll, they'll blast Oh, them. yes. A lot of the credit. Not mine, not mine. Yeah, the, the credit repair companies, uh, there are a few uh, out there that'll say, uh, it's not mine. Uh, my favorite is, it's not mine, cease and desist all, whatever. Ooh. Yeah, the second you do that. Danger it, will Yeah, Robinson. that gets you sued. I've my eye on this no button. I feel like. That, gets you, that gets you a lot. Of, you, you, you keep that there. That's a. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we're not, by God, we're not saying it's not yours. What we're saying is, hey, guys, with all due respect, prove it. Because here's the deal. you got three bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. These are private companies. These are mercenaries. They are not missionaries. And they deal in data, okay? You're not their customer. I'm not their customer. These guys are not their customers. The bank is their customer, okay? And what they're dealing in is your data. So you got these three bureaus, right? And they keep the info on you and you and me and all of you out there. And they get the info on 350 million people every single month. Now, they get this from, on average, 20 different sources per person. So this is 20 times 3 times 350 million pieces of data. If they wanted to verify and validate even 1% of this, they'd need a million employees. A credit report would cost like 50 grand, legitimately. It's, it's not feasible. So they do this many. They do zero. In case you're just listening, I'm holding my hand in a zero. They, they investigate none of them. None of them. None of it's verified or validated. So the problem is, I mean, it wouldn't be an issue if it wasn't used for anything, but you know, Coincidentally, credit's used for everything these exactly. days. Exactly. Not just big stuff either. Background checks for jobs, security clearance for the military. Your car insurance rates are based off it. I got to walk away from at T-Mobile, no money for the red. They had two of these phones, and the guy next to me who dove on the other one had to pay a thousand bucks. He kind of looked at me and just gave me my card because <laughs> his credit sucked. So <laughs> I was like, oh. And oh, I said, oh, you bought it from? You yeah, no, card? no, and I gave him that my. That was no, so nice. No, hell no, I get my business card. <laughs> We're mercenaries, not missionaries, baby. Um, so just like the bureaus. No, so they keep the info on all these people, and and credit's now used for everything. So where do they go? Where do the where does the job background check go? Where 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 do all these people go to check you out? To check out your credit? They go to the world's largest repository of unverified, unvalidated data, the bureaus. And that's not fair. It's not. Government did something right for once and agreed with that, and they made a law called the FCRA, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And what it does, again, is simply lets us say, with all due respect, folks, prove it. Prove it's mine, prove it's real, prove it's current, prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it. And if you can't verify, validate, and document that it's accurate, factual, correct, current, and verifiable today, not back when it happened, but today, 
then by law, like that. <laughs> That's well, how it and, works. And that is to that was my you. visual. <laughs> that is to protect you from the suppositories. There is, there I mean, is, not suppositories. A lot yeah, of, uh, there's no, a lot I of put it back here. For a, Freudian, no. a Freudian slip of what the bureaus could it's, be. I get excited. You didn't have the opportunity. Y'all you know, knew I was Italian when you met me. Now this is shocking. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you know, they can't verify validating document is accurate, it's factual, it's current, correct, verifiable today, then by law it has to be poof, gone, removed from the credit profile mm -hmm. like it never happened. Now, it doesn't mean the debt's gone. If you owe someone a dollar, you owe them a dollar. But it means their ability to report to credit card. I want to interject on that. It's something important if you're going to take on some of this yourself, which is the purpose of the show, to mm -hmm. give you an opportunity if this is something that you want to tackle. Um, it's not necessarily going to be a removal. It's actually what you request in that letter. So if you don't right. leave out, an, if you leave out any request of an action at the end of that, you're going to. Oh yeah, yeah. You go. I want you so to check this out because it would be neat to know. But at the yeah, end, well, of that's it, not going to help you. You need to say with this particular account, I, I like demand. This, yeah. I demand this part corrected or whatever it is. If you're asking for a removal and Correct. they can't, it's going to be removed. If you ask for a repair on a specific aspect of it, it's yep. going to be repaired, not deleted. Mm -hmm. You have to right. be specific in right. what you're asking the bureaus. And you're asking different things for different reasons. Let's say you've got a credit card that's got two lates on it ever. Otherwise, it's a great account. You want to keep that account on there, right? It's open. It's active. What you do is you say, you know, verify that I was 30 days late in March and January, or I demand that you remove the late marks from the recording or the reporting of this account. Let's say it had 30 bad things on it. Okay, verify, blah, 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 or I demand you delete this account from my record. Those are two very different things. Yeah. A repair means we fi you, know, you fixed it. And deletion means, thanks for playing, guys, it's gone. Well, exactly. And that's another reason why I'd say that it, it, why there's some benefits of working with a company like Credit Life is yeah, that we know what we're doing. there's even times <laughs> that based on certain creditors, you know, creditors operate mm -hmm. in different ways. You know, there are certain times that you may want to challenge a late payment on, let's say, like a secured credit card. Right. Some of them will actually close the account to dispute it. Send you back your deposit and be done with you. Yeah, there, there. So that they're, could actually, hurt and it's you. not just yeah, the exactly. secured cards. There are some major credit card uh, There's companies certain business out there. Ones as well. Yeah, that that'll yep. do it. So that's that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, this show is to help empower people to get an awareness around credit mm -hmm. repair and getting back on track. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand that there's a difference between just doing it yourself, learning. You know, there's a there's a large learning yeah. curve. I mean, we know we've hired many employees and it takes time to really understand this and it's constantly changing. Then on top of that, you have to throw in the nuances of knowing that based on experience, hey, this creditor acts this way, this collection right. company acts this way, this one is one of the few ones that will do payment for deletion, right. this one does not. This is how we tackle this one based on the history. Th you know what I mean? There's so many different things on top of what Brian talked about, the structure, the letter, the verbiage and follow-up investigations. Mm -hmm. It's not just one round. No. A lot of times people think they just send out one round of letters and that might be it. Yeah, one and done it is not how this works. It might take multiple rounds right. of follow-up investigations where now you're using different verbiage, different formatting to investigate a different aspect of the account. Right, you're not asking the same thing over and over again hoping something different yeah. happens. And we're not saying that you can't, we're not saying that someone isn't capable of doing this on their own by oh, any yeah. means. You just have to understand that the results may vary based on your level and knowledge of understanding how this all works. Well, it's like I could perform my own appendectomy and I might do okay, but I'm gonna <laughs> go. I'm gonna go with the doctor because they're a little bit more experienced in this sort of thing. I, I, I prefer. Exactly. I prefer like professional painting as an analogy, but if, if surgery is yeah. going your way, well, yeah. you're lucky I didn't go with the bris. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if I. I don't know. I, I, I don't like the painting one because, only because little, anyone yeah. really can paint. Well, you know what I mean? Bob Ross? Uh, well, yes. I, this is you like too. happy little yeah. trees on your wall? I, but what I'm saying I'm going to go to your house. I'm going to make some I happy little trees. I think that I would compare it more to like woodworking. You have to understand the different tools, how they, how you do different planing of Bungie wood and, and, and all that. You know what I mean? Like, yes, can someone learn that? Yeah, but is it going to take time to understand how to use all the tools and, and be we safe could with all, them? We yeah. could all woodwork, but the outcome would, would exactly. be different be depending very on different. our level It would, it would. Like the appendectomy. That's good. Jeez Louise. Okay, I'm cueing some music. Because it's probably a good time to talk about another thing that Credit Life's been working on. Yeah. Um, we've got the uh, right way to real estate program that we've been working to put together the uh, the best of the best real estate agents and loan officer across the country. Yep. Uh, what we're trying to do, again, it has to do with creating an environment where people can come in and um, get an understanding of their credit, get an understanding of their money, make steps to improving their life and their future, but then also move towards goals like home ownership, which is extremely important right now with the prices of rent. And through this network, not only are you going to be paired up with some of the best uh, industry professionals in your area, 
but you're also going to, at closing, get up to $800 back in incentives and cash. Buy a new washer and dryer, new fridge, whatever you need yep. for that closing. It's something you're not going to find anywhere one hand else. Of, one hand of blackjack. What? Or one, one hand, hand well, of one you, hand of blackjack. One of two things will happen. You just go there and you put it all on relay and put roulette. <laughs> put it all on relay. 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 A, I think on, that's the Canadian put it pronunciation. All on black and you could even leave <laughs> with sixteen hundred dollars. You I could, mean, or just, woo, woo. at least a free cocktail. So, <laughs> so it's the right way, right way to real estate. Program. And the wrong way to spend your money. And uh, yeah, the wrong <laughs> right. way. Yeah, don't go to the casino with your money and try and double it just before rent is due. It's dangerous game. This, this program, so they could essentially. I just this thing c- c- continues to blow my mind. If someone goes for like let's say six months in the Credit Life program, eight hundred bucks back at closing will pretty much pay, pay for, the, for program. the program. So and like that's, and that, their goal that's is paying on the for real the real estate side. Yeah. If they utilize our our mortgage network as well, they're doing up to uh, right now it's two hundred fifty dollars credit as well. So in theory, you're looking $1, at thousand fifty dollars exactly. We are constantly overall. working on additional that's incentives insane. within the program, and it's and, it, and yep. the great thing is is that what we're doing is we're putting people into a ready-to-buy position. So yep. the real estate agents, the loan officers, best of the best that we're reaching out to, vetting their reviews, vetting their team, because it takes more than one good agent to get something done because you want to have someone available for last-minute showings or sure. marketing and all these things. But um, that's exactly it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, they know that you are going to be an ideal client. That's and awesome. so yep. they're willing to so chip in and, and make this process exactly. even better for you. So they're getting the VIP treatment. That to me is so important. Yeah, the higher end realtor. And yeah. Understanding too, when you're coming, you know, you're coming to Credit Life for this option. If you need to work with us, you need some help. Perfect. If you don't, you can still come to us because we've done the legwork. We are finding literally the top professionals. We understand this in, this industry very well, and it's very difficult for a consumer to navigate and essentially interview all the different agents in an area. You don't know if they're part-time, full-time, yeah. experienced, not experienced. You don't know if they understand the art of negotiation or not. There's so many different variables that come into play in the real estate side. And then on the mortgage side, you don't know if there's someone that experienced, understands the different loan products out there, understanding how to right. get you in the best loan position. So we've done that work for you. And then on top of that, going through us, you can get an understanding of your credit and financial position to make sure you're maximizing your potential when it comes to your credit and then you get the before best you start the process. Yeah. Now you're saving even more money. You're getting the best interest rate. At least you're putting yourself in the best position right. for that. And you're getting connected with the top industry professionals in your area to help you with this entire process. I long mean, long story that. short, it's a really good idea. It's, like <laughs> the, it's the best <laughs> idea. It's a good idea to do this. If you're looking to purchase a home, do this. I had at least 10 conversations last night with clients that have already reached out to us. We've had over 60 people in the past week reach out to us for this. It's amazing how mm-hmm. smooth the process is becoming. We have this this uh, vetted network. Yep. We're going through them having a conversation with the client, understanding where they're at. Some are in the program, some are not. So that helps dictate what we're gonna do. What's nice is if you're in the program, this is another positive. If you're in the program, these professionals understand what we're doing for you. We're here to rock out as a team for you. So that makes it even better yeah, for you. Yeah, everyone's working together. And so we're able to really figure this stuff out. I mean, it's really amazing, you know, the type of conversations we're having. And also, mm-hmm. too, the last thing I want to say, sorry. No, I just, I'm just yeah, so stoked on this. Excited that's thing. Point, you know though. what I mean? Is um, when you are going and working with us, our goal, once again, is to put you in the best position possible. We're not looking at this saying, hey, hey, oh, yeah, oh, you were applying for a mortgage? Okay, fill out my application. And just like the standard protocol, right? Right. We are literally acting in your best interest to make sure you're in the best position possible. You know, that to me is so important because that could equal difference of sometimes a few hundred dollars per month. Mm -hmm. It could be thousands of dollars in savings. Right. You might just be, you know, because remember, everything jumps in in 20 point increments for the most part. Mortgage. Mortgage. What if you're sitting at a 666 or like, or let's say like a 676 and you're the devil and you just okay. needed like three <laughs> points to hit 680 middle score. Yeah. And that could be a difference of a hundred bucks a month right. in the mortgage insurance, like literally things like that. So it's like, and it is that making, huge. It's that it's when it you're is. talking about something the size of a mortgage, the differences in money are that big. And it then it really is. And then if you look at a mortgage, a mortgage is 360 payments for a 30 year loan. So if you save a hundred bucks because you waited a month, yeah. two months, or you did a, a program for 800 bucks that you got back at the closing table, um, which is totally a no brainer. Um, but if you did that, you're going to save, what is that? 36, is that $36,000 over the life of the loan? Yeah, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. You That's know, but it's all done in a way 
to, to, to make sure someone's making the best decisions, mm-hmm. save the most amount of money, achieve their dreams, achieve their goals, that's aggressive. working with a I great like team, and having the best experience. I mean, that's exactly what this program's providing. And there's nothing worse than, than uh, getting, after, uh, getting after this to make these huge changes in your life and then to end up working with someone who's kind of ignorant to what you're going through and makes you feel like you've done something wrong or you've done yeah. it, you're making mistakes yeah. in, in, your, uh, in your process. These these uh, partners that working with they understand the business they understand they the get necessity it. of this because yep. people go through stuff that uh, have an impact on their lives right. and they have to recover from that. If people right. went through something and never recovered, we'd be in a lot worse shape yeah, as a country. Yep. You have to have these opportunities. That's again. awesome. So that's the right way to real estate program. Right. Uh, they can contact Credit Life for that. Yeah, um, info at yep. Credit Life at yourcreditlife.com. And if you guys are doing your own self uh, your own self uh, um, repair. You can still contact info at yourcreditlife.com. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That, and, and what's going to be really nice, program. too, when we launch the Credit Rockstars website, mm-hmm. all this information will be on the website. Perfect. So it'll make it a little bit easier in the future when you have so many different moving parts and sponsors. So the letters. we got, we got to get wrap up this letters yeah. thing. So the letters. Let's give them some guidance. Okay. So you can find these things on www.yourcreditlife.com. And you go to the top of the page over on the right, you'll see the uh, the tools <laughs> I'm section. Sorry, I'm laughing right now because people who say www dot still <laughs> are typically like older. Yes, it's <laughs> like you don't even need to type it anymore. For the, like, it's for the it's for the I know it's, it's for the masses. Oh it's for the masses, goodness, brother. It's it for the masses. It makes me laugh so much when I hear that. Yeah, but if you just go to yourcreditlife.com, I know. Well, it, go to the tools <laughs> section. <laughs> If you don't create the subdomain of www anymore, it won't even go anywhere. Well, here's the funny thing is, Mm. Jeremy still operates out of AOL. (laughs) I I do have an AOL email address. (laughs) Now, uh, just because it's like freaking old school, I think I'll sell it someday. (laughs) Yes. I have an AOL email address. It's my my retro email address. So you're at yourcreditlife.com, the tools section, and you're checking out the investigation letter templates. Jeremy, send them off. What are they doing with that? How do they use it? Let's go. You're going to go in there. You're going to read them. You're going to take and you, by the way, these are templates. So like, don't just send out what you've printed there with the red ink that says, here's where you put your accounts. That would be kind of Don't want to save that. Don't do that. You actually want to save this thing, edit this thing. You're going to make your own letter. It's okay to use some of your own words. What you're going to do is you're going to list those accounts that you've highlighted in red. You're going to list those accounts that you highlighted in yellow, the negatives, the questionables. You're going to go after every one of them. Now, if you have an account on TransUnion you're not, that's not on, on Experian, you're not going to put that on the letter to Experian, okay? Exactly. You're going to put in there, you're going to put the, the, the name of the account. You're going to put the account number, and it may say like 143192 asterisk, 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 or XXXX. Put the X's, that's fine. That redacted account number is fine. It can reference, put that in there. So I'm asking about, you know, my, 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 um, you know, Maurice's, Capital One Maurice's card. Uh, it's it's 413219436XXX. X, X, X. Uh, you said I was 30 days late in December of uh, 17 and, and, and 30 days late in September of 17. I want you to verify that those were indeed late or I demand that you delete those late marks from the reporting of this. And maybe you've got, you know, and now on my Midland Capital Collection, number blah, 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 you know, I demand if you can't verify that this is the correct balance or the date of last activity or whatever you wanna ask, I demand that you delete that account from my record. So you put all those things together. Don't worry about inquiries. Inquiries are a whole different topic, a whole different day. Um, put all those things together, all those accounts, you list them, and then you're going to put in a copy of your driver's license or state ID, a copy of your social security number, or a copy of the front page of your taxes to show your social, and a voided check, a bank statement, a utility bill, a cell phone bill, something that's got your address in it. You're going to put that all together. You're going to fold that all up. By the way, you've typed this letter. You've typed it in black ink on white paper. You didn't handwrite it in blue or in blood on a pizza box mm. or a nonsense like that, okay? You just hand or you just. You, the only thing you're going to handwrite is sign the bottom of the letter to the bureau. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, in, in most cases, yeah. you know, the reason why Jeremy's bringing that up is that there's a lot of misinformation Big out there on investigations saying, you know, you need to hand, handwrite all letters and send everything certified, and you want to dupe the bureaus by doing these things. It makes it, no sense. It doesn't it's not work. real. And typing it is very important because you want it to be legible. Right. You know what I mean? That's very important because, once again, it's about the verbiage. It's about the structure and the format. Yeah. If you're doing your handwriting ink, 
you could easily fall in a different dispute code that wasn't intended, yeah, intended and have a bad result. It's about the message. It's not about how you delivered the exactly. message. Exactly. So you know, you're going to fold that all up. You're going to put it in an envelope. You're going to lick it if it's old school. You're going to pull the sticker off if it's new school. You're going to put a regular old stamp on it. Regular old plain old stamp. You're not going to send it certified or anything like that. Again, as I always say, if you want to spend the extra six bucks times three, you want to spend that 18 bucks that you'd spend on certified, send it to Jeremy, care of Credit Life. Uh, send that money in cash to me, please. <laughs> uh, and then still, and still use stamps because all you need is a stamp. Professionally, we send this many letters certified. This many, zero, none, nada, zip. Mm -hmm. The only time that really becomes something that you is if you're working with a consumer advocacy attorney. There'll exactly. be situations Falling where under something different. Yeah, right. at that point in time, let the lawyer. Yeah, let the lawyer ball game, it. and that's right. trickled yes. down into all this right. misinformation that I've gotten people thinking they need to spend twenty bucks a, a month. To yeah, do their it's silly. There aren't a lot of post office boxes that can sign for your certified letter. Well, you know what it comes down to. This is my thought on everything. Mm -hmm. Is a lot of companies purposely make this process sound more difficult than it needs to be, and there's more strategy involved. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. You need experience. You need the knowledge to do this correct. But they don't want to deliver the reality of what it is. They're afraid of that because they're afraid that, well, hey, well then you're going to go and do this on your well, own. Well, it's the it's only like, thing they do, man. It's a lot of companies out there push yeah. and emphasize the letters so much. Um, there's a reason, by the way, that Credit Life gives the letter templates away for free on the website. Think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. We give this to you free, okay? It's not the letters. There's nothing magical that any company can do. There's no magic in the letters. That's the s spooky secret of mm -hmm. credit repair. There's no magic like, in the letters. Exactly. There's magic in the professional coaching. There's magic in the experience knowing how to address certain creditors that we've seen maybe 12,000 times. Exactly. And we know typically that if we use this investigation strategy versus that investigation strategy with them that will have a tendency for better success. There's the experience. There's then the development, the growth, the coaching, the planning. I mean, you come to Credit Life, for example, you're getting FICO certified credit coaches here. I mean, we're certifying the algorithm that creates your score. So we kind of have a pretty good idea of what you might want to do you know, exactly. to get there. It's a math formula, literally. Well, and it's just like, you know, a lot of times I'll explain it. Right. You know, if anyone's here local, lifetime, right. will everywhere. But, you know, just because you join a gym doesn't mean you're going to lose weight. I know that. You know what I mean? Like, you have to <laughs> exercise. You. This is why Lifetime provides supplements. They provide dietitians. They provide group exercise planning. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a holistic approach and right. the environment. Just like us, you know, we're providing coaching, credit building strategies yep. with your future buying power, debt management, how you manage debt, yeah. re credit repair. There's a, it's a holistic yeah, approach compared to what, how to be approved for lending. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other ball game mm -hmm. in itself is understanding how lenders evaluate you for approval. That's what we provide as a service. Right. Specific goals. That's the thing. If your goal is specific, the steps, the process that you need to get there is also specific. This is not a one size fits all. It's not a spit out a letter and congratulations, the world's beautiful again. That's not how credit repair works. But investigation, a couple things about it. The yep. letters, number one, it's the first step in the credit repair process. It really is, as far as the actual repairing, that's the first step, not paying off things necessarily first step, not pay for deletes, not call the, no, 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 no. The letters is the first step from a credit standpoint investigation. Now paying things off, while well, it's a step in the process, from credit standpoint, it's not mm -hmm. the first. First is always, always, always repair. gonna be, yeah, repair, but investigate. I love it. So when would someone send a direct to credit bureau versus a direct to credit or a collection company? When would they send a direct to bureau? You're I know always, we talked about that, but I wanna be more specific for If it's listeners. showing up on the bureau, you're gonna send it to the bureau. If it is not showing up on the bureau, you would send it to direct to the creditor or you may want to hang out and wait until they do something. I mean, it depends on the situation. By the way, this is where guidance on your individual situation will help. Mm -hmm. That's why I said it's not a one size fits all. Um, if you are having a collection company like Midland and Midland's out there and Midland's also on your credit bureau, you're going to send an investigation letter to the bureau and you're going to send that 609 or that validation letter to Midland. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they don't need to send you an original copy of the contract with your wet ink signature on it. Whoever came up with that um, is probably <laughs> why <laughs> pot's legal in California. Well, so it, it, what? 
legal or illegal? It's legal. It's illegal a lot of places, I think, now. Yeah. Well, then there's but a lot of people who came up thing, with stuff like that. Another thing, just to point out, when you're sending it directly for the creditors, <laughs> don't include your IDs and stuff. No, you, don't you give You don't want to give them yeah. all additional information. Don't put your social and date of birth and stuff on the letter. Yep. Different to the bureaus. They have all that information already. You don't want to provide. The, the collection agency is going to take all that yep. and just clean their exactly. record Thank up. Thank you. Oh, now I know how to get you. All the <laughs> new information here. So yeah. if you oh, want look, to verify your social, I can do that. a tech stub. <laughs> yeah. No, and instructions on that stuff are actually in red on the letters themselves, on the templates. I mean, we made these things so what you need that's the yeah. rock out action item rock out action go to yourcreditlife.com thank you and uh <laughs> Boom. and tools. uh tools click on the tools section mm-hmm. and read the stuff that's in there too i mean there's more than just there's the two a credit letters safety guide credit safety there's guide it'll give you a walk through yeah stuff. yeah check that out and should you decide oh my gosh i do want to get professional help on it reach out to credit life uh, there's a, a little thing on there that you can reach out to us and talk yeah. to a coach. Well, I think it's very simple for that for someone to me. You know, if you're if you're goal driven, mm-hmm. if you want to be approved, let's say for a mortgage, mm-hmm. I would highly recommend scheduling a consultation. Take advantage of the hundred dollar off yeah, offer it's pretty and legit. speak to a, a coach. Now, remember, the initial call itself doesn't cost you money up front. So we're gonna go through and, and get an understanding of your specific situation, your current credit status. And your goals, that's the most important thing. If you are goal-driven, once again, like a mortgage, mm-hmm. you're a perfect candidate for someone like our program. Right. If you're someone that's just more like, hey, you know what, I have bad credit. I don't really have anything coming up. It's not er- pressing. You know, I'm just kind of filling out the waters. I want to see if I can do this on my own. Yeah. 100% utilize the tools section and start navigating through this based on our vetted resources. Figure out that's, if you can do it. Yeah, that's absolutely. The difference. There's nothing you know wrong what with I mean? that. Like, I just think that that's important for people to understand that. You know, it's like, you know, we're here to help people achieve specific goals, lending goals, and really just what they're looking to level right, up. Right. That's that's our clientele. That's who we're working with. Yeah, if, if you're serious, if you've got a goal, if you really want to take it on, you know, it's like anything. That's when you hire a coach. That's when you hire a trainer. That's when you hire, you know, somebody to help you in the process. If you're testing the waters, test the waters yourself. Please do it. I mean, the thing is, I would rather have you do the the self stuff, the DIY types of things then not do anything. My gosh, don't just sit there exactly. going, oh, my credit's don't bad, woe is me. Take action. Yeah, regardless. you got to do something. And that's why it's our action item, our, our rockout action item for you. This is, you know, so if you've been following, the rockout action item is take what you highlighted last week on your credit report. And if you highlighted don't know, in red. Yep, if you, don't know what, if, if you don't know what we're talking about, you got some more videos to watch. But hi- <laughs> take what you highlighted, and you're going to start your investigation letters on those items. By the way, one thing to say, if you don't have a computer, can you handwrite them? Yes, you can. You can handwrite them, mm-hmm. but man, save an arm cramp or a hand cramp, go to the library yeah. or something like that if you don't have a exactly. computer. Well, I'm excited. I can't wait to hear yeah. the feedback. You know, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube. Yep. If you're following us in free credit Prayer advice, ask questions. If you're following us on any one of our social media pages, ask questions. We want to hear from you when it comes to you taking action on our rock out action items. This is what I'm most excited about. That's why we created the show, is to give you these rock out action items. Absolutely. So you're constantly being proactive. You're constantly taking positive action in your situation. That's why we have this show is to educate you, help you take action so you can continue to improve on your situation. Action. Take action. Action. Yes. Yeah. You should so, take action now. <laughs> that's good stuff. Hey, oh, we're getting music. I love it. Music's coming that out. That is so awesome. Drowning you that out. Went, hey, that went fine. That went make fast. sure you check out Credit TV on YouTube, C-R-E-D-I TV, uh, for, well, for Credit Life and for the uh, Credit Rockstars. I'm, I'm Jeremy Dysak. I'm Jay Rocks. <laughs> and I'm Brian Del Terzo. Tinkling the keys. <laughs> Tinkling on the keys. Wait. Have a great day, everybody.